Yeah, and yeah. It's so cool to see that's coming out pretty much in March, March right? Next month, since it's going to be already February. Yeah, it is already. March. And February uh, being the shortest of all months, so. Right. Yeah. So it should be coming really quick here. So yeah, I was excited to see uh, Oscar playing a pretty uh, cool Moon Knight, playing kind of the the role pretty cool i mean i know i've known moon knight has changed over the years especially since his first appearance being in like I'm, the werewolf by well he, he hasn't has supposed to be like a villain in that and they've over the years of you know yeah he's here, more, he's always he, been weird he's been a weird non like i feel like moon knight was never well defined when he came out he was never like yeah. he was and, uh, uh he was definitely an uh antagonist right he was always yeah. like and even now, he's a lot of the times written that way, even in his yeah. own comics. Definitely, I think when they first came out with him, I think it was they were trying to like kind of compete with that like Batman kind of character. Because at that time, I, I've heard from uh, old comic fans that he wasn't really the schizo kind of friend. Of no, you know, he he didn't get now. that until yeah, he didn't get that until a little bit later. He st- he had always had some weird stuff starting out, but it wasn't like a big part of his thing. It was more played off as like him being a kind of like undercover right like pretending to be yeah these people and then later it was like retconned into being like no he actually thinks he's these people (laughs) right like which is cool i've heard some people say they didn't like that take but those are the old heads you know and i and i kind of like the take of this kind of i'm not gonna lie he's so much more interesting now mental illness kind of uh, yeah yeah or marvel side now (laughs) if you can kind of say i mean it's even beyond that like I'm not going to lie, without the mental illness aspect of Moon Knight, he really doesn't, he's too much of a Batman ripoff. If that yeah. makes, I mean, and it I mean, sounds so like weird. God conchu stuff. Even with the God like, conchu yeah. stuff, it's I mean, just it's so, because yeah. he doesn't it's get a- anything from that. Like, later he gets, to, like, he got stuff in the recent Avengers run or whatever where like, he was, yeah, like, going crazy. Con- but yeah, literally, was. yeah, literally <laughs> be- before that, he got no powers from Conchu. Like nothing. He wasn't physically or like hands. So he was literally just crazy. Right, that's what I kind of. Well, he was. He was like serving Conchu's will, right? Like, so if Conchu wanted to like steal a sarcophagus or his like original stories were all very themed and you know what I mean. He was and he was and it was fine, but it's boring. It was so boring. It was he was a right. worse ripoff of Batman than Green Arrow was. <laughs> Just saying. At least Green Arrow had a shtick. His shtick was he was dressed in white, and he worshipped an Egyptian like god. <laughs> no, no, and, and acted with a little bit, but he didn't get more violent until the schizophrenic era. You know what I mean? He was wow. violent, but he wasn't what we think of as Moon Knight violent now, right? He would have been um, the Dark Knight violent levels uh, when he first came out, you know what I mean? So he he just didn't have that much. So I think the adding of the schizophrenia stuff puts a lot of character and individuality on him, right? Like right. He, it, it separates yeah, him and adds definitely. depth. And it looks yeah. interesting just watching the trailer because even just seeing that part where she, he picks up the phone and he's like, what are you talking about? And I, I'm pretty sure a lot of non-fans who don't know what's going on. Oh, they're going to be so lost. Interested. They're so lost, yeah, you know. They're lost, but I think they're they're very interested. Well, oh, yeah, I like, think. Like, what's going yeah. on? Like, why is he saying there's two different people here? What's going on? So two two things I want to go and uh, talk about for it for sure. Uh, one, like you said, the whole mental health, like challenging and tackling that kind of aspect is definitely um, something that one Marvel is tent tends to do with some of its heroes i think in the comics not necessarily the movies so far but we also had seen it with like uh legion when uh the uh yeah. when uh fox and them did That's legion probably and, good though well, the first season yeah. was a pretty good one the second one actually the second yeah. season yeah. wasn't a I never finished it, <laughs> it was, the second season wasn't as uh good but it was actually probably better for like the the whole mental health thing like the way okay. the mental health is displayed in season two definitely is way more on point with like uh like the feeling of mental health whereas the definitely, first one yeah. is like a cinematic don't get me wrong first season of legion is great too and i still like that way more than the second legion second season but the second season definitely kind of challenges that me- mental health stuff a little bit more 
Um, I'm excited to see Moon Knight do it, but the thing it also does that Legion did and that Doctor Strange is probably going to do, which I'm super hoping for, which we didn't get from New Mutants, was I'm looking for Marvel hor Marvel Marvel horror stuff because cool. yeah, definitely. yeah, well, we were supposed to get it with New Mutants. Remember, it was it was kind of billed as yeah, this like, yeah, the, and it just it the, just there didn't. Were just yeah. So many like uh, re remember because they they delayed it three yeah, times. Yeah. Yeah, like they're, they're yeah. So I don't think whether, and I, I think I even heard from the original director that what he put out wasn't really his original. Which sucks, but I'm what you know do. yeah, which sucks, but I'm gonna give him the same sh spiel I gave uh, Schneider and Raimi, which is that sucks, but that's the movie we got to work with until until we get the you know the um the Raimi version of Spider Man three and the. Which I actually wouldn't mind for the the Raimi cut of Spider Man Three and see how it goes, but but uh, I think it, for me it would be the same. I mean, that'd be cool. I mean, I guess they would ever do that, but they, I guess they would have to have to do the whole film, right? Because yeah, they'd have to because it's so fucking. You know. It was only lucky because I mean, he he pretty much had everything done. It's just he needed to kind of put everything together and stuff. Yeah, but, and then maybe do one or two two shoots. I guess he said. Oh, but really, honestly, and then two hundred million dollars in a VFX. Okay. But let's not talk yeah. about that. <laughs> But, um, Which is so funny to yeah. me because it it only made as much money as it spent in VFX, I think, mm -hmm. over its like uh, demand run. <laughs> you know, it's funny too because I thought they said it was only going to be HBO Max, and then it, and then I think mm -hmm. it would have three four months later it's all oh, coming out on TV. Yeah, so here's here's what they don't tell you whenever they say um, uh, specific to or exclusive to. What they don't put is the little star that says, until we lose the contract. Yeah. because and, Or the copyright, because in 90 years, uh -huh. uh, the copyright just goes into open form anyway, and then it's no longer going to be think exclusive. I it was even marketed on the, on the actual... No, it was, absolutely. Uh, and, you know, and to be fair... They buy from HBO. Um, <laughs> to be fair, uh, it's the same kind of thing Disney did with Black Widow. You know yeah. what I mean? Where it was oh, kind of the you know the a uh, bit yeah. yeah but but it's the same kind of concept and it's this it's it's one of those things where they very much hide that subtext where it's like exclusive until you know it, for a limited time realistically is what it should say exclusive for a limited time because even thinking about PlayStation exclusives like God of War that just recently came to the PC yeah. Uh, really, um... Right, but it's inevitable Xbox, for everything. Probably, that one probably won't. And that, that, they'll, they'll probably keep that one close away from Xbox. But yeah, PC uh, for, for a sure. while. Cool to see it go there. But uh, I was looking at some of the the because they had it already set to like actually they they in, uh, yeah it's like Jesus it looked really good. <laughs> but um, um but. Yeah, so uh, other than that, I mean, uh, Moon Knight looks pretty good. I'm excited for him. Um, I think it's the other thing is... Here, uh, coming up pretty soon. So, yeah, something yeah. that we can be excited for and not have to wait any longer. For real. Go right into uh, Doctor Strange right after, I think, is springtime, it said? Early spring? It's, oh, or I think they... Summer. Did they push it back again? I can't remember. Let me... Uh, oh, Morbius was supposed to come out last month, but then they pushed that back all the way... What? Oh... I think like a good three, four months. Yeah, it should be sometime. No, it's uh, this month. It's a actually, it's like four days from now. What? It's this month. That's right. Okay. Wow. Is this a lot of people. <laughs> yeah, the next month. No, wait, wait, wait. Uh, it, I think it might have been delayed again. Nope. Yep. It got delayed again till go. April. Okay, I thought so. I was like, I thought they pushed it. Even I mean, uh, my my thing is, it does suck, and it obviously there's effects, but I think once again. There's not going to be... Like, Spider-Man did really well, obviously, because it was Spider-Man. But... Realistic... And there was just all that talk, I get, that people knew that there was supposedly the other two. So I know people were kind of like, oh, are they going to really be in there? So it really got to, like, even to uh, Endgame hype, but, like, uh, almost, I think it... I mean, the... I don't know if it racked in money like that. It racked in hype like that, for sure. But it, 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 there's just... The, the COVID time monies are just not, like, the mm -hmm. regular time monies. I think it maybe broke a billion... But I'd I'd even be tentative on that. Uh, let's see, no way home revenue. Uh, but uh, yeah, one point three seven billion. So 
okay. know, it's so, about what I. No, no, it's pretty good. I mean, it's relative. Spider-Man movie. I mean, yeah, it's really great. No, I mean, and even the thing, uh, and and considering it did that in the middle of kind of COVIDy times, I mean, yeah. it's it's easily made more than double anybody else. I think in the in yeah. the same t- in the, in still, the COVID time I think, period. Uh, number one on the box office, uh, Scream was one last weekend. And then it took it down. Uh, Spider Man took it down this weekend, the second week for Scream. So Scream didn't. It was sec- it's second now in the in the box office for this week. But it was. Yeah. I went to actually go see that too. I actually really enjoyed the new Scream movie. Uh, I never got to see the one right before that, but this uh, I really don't think you kind of have to for this one. This the Scream one. stories are all f***ed up, and they kind of know it. So I think they play off of the fact that they know, but yeah. nobody cares but about the really continuity. Good. I really enjoyed it. It was uh, still kind of doing a callback to the original, but then also kind of doing its own little thing in this one. And also kind of playing on these new terms that I never really heard of before, <laughs> like uh, requel. Uh, which is not it's still kind of doing a callback a to the original, but then also kind of doing its own technically repoop, but it's a sequel, but not technically a sequel. So it's called a requel. <laughs> I think they're just, uh, I think they're just use, hmm. like other terms of like what considers it a requel of like, okay, well, you need to bring on legacy characters. And then they started talking in like, okay, you bring in like, you know, uh, Sydney, uh, all them, and all like those other three characters, the sheriff all back into this new movie. And they also brought up like other movies like, okay, Ghostbusters did it jurassic park world did it already which kind of technically yeah some of these movies are yeah did all these kind of recall kind of type terms and i mean i cool didn't find out who the the killer was at the end because i really thought it was even funny the way they kind of played it on who the actual killer was it it, it was good and i i i give it a good uh good shot of like re kind of vamping or refreshing the, the series and kind of going from there but and also without being the Wes Craven doing this movie as well. This is the first one he uh, didn't have his hands in since he passed away, I think, like, what, four or three years ago now? Uh, I don't know. It's actually, it's been a while, I think, actually. Yeah, it might be longer than that now, yeah. Uh, but I know he, yeah, he did the last one. Yeah, 2015, so it would have been seven yeah. years. Yeah, it's been quite a while, so. Yeah, I just knew, I was like, it's been a second for him. But no, it makes sense. And once again, it's interesting to see all of these old 90s uh, properties coming back in 20 years later. Obviously, they all exist. Oh, I mean, just tons of them. You could, you could write a book. I'm much excited for King of the Hill to come back. I've always, I've always kind of had like a little. I like King of the Hill. I think I don't think I've ever heard King of the Hill. I don't think I've ever heard anyone actually say anything bad about King of the Hill. Like off the top of my, it's a very. Judge can't go wrong with my. Yeah, I think it's always been a very, yeah, and it's a very like mild mannered like show. Yeah, in in the sense that it's an adult animated show that is not crazy raunchy like freaking no, simpsons not. or and actually no. had some life lessons here and there everyone yeah no i mean and so did the simpsons and stuff but I, once again i think like once again the king of the hill was very much an adult cartoon and not a adult cartoon if that makes it's hard to explain it like it was a cartoon for adults that was that did address things and did sometimes have a little bit of outlandish or shocking things but it was never purposely raunchy or ridiculous mm-hmm. in ways that were not for kids right it was just like pure flavored comedy which is interesting right Right. But uh, now yeah, we're talking about King of the Hill, the they're also bringing back Beavis and Butthead. Yeah, I heard that as well. Did, I, isn't it? Isn't it again? Was. Again? Because didn't they already do that a couple years they ago? Where they? Yeah, yeah, they did. Yeah, it, it was only like I think a couple episodes, maybe eight, like a season. Season. Yeah, but it wasn't very long. And, I heard it didn't get really good reception. Yeah, like. Uh, Excuse me, Beavis is a little bit kind of uh, skinny, got wrinkly face, and they've got Butthead, who's more fatter, <laughs> and kind of like, yeah, it's just more older them. And I heard, I guess, Mike Judge and um, the creator, also, there's a co creator with him on King of the Hill. I can't remember his name. Uh, yeah, and no one ever remembers. A streaming platform, I guess, I heard. So that's, I guess, why these are getting revived. So interesting. I, I didn't look into it too much, but I, that's kind of what I was reading. I've seen some of the See, titles and, stuff and I starting a streaming service. And and it's always interesting to me because to deal with somebody else. I don't know. <laughs> no, I mean, and maybe they did start it, but it's always interesting to me because we have so many of these streaming services that are popping up, and mm-hmm. and it used to be that I thought, well, maybe we wouldn't have enough people, but now it's just that we have different spheres of like people watching things. Right? There's so many people that all these streaming platforms will have customers. 
right? Mm -hmm. Well, theoretically, you know, there's obviously cases where they're not going to offer good stuff or whatever, and then they'll go out of business and other streaming platforms will take over their customers. But otherwise, it seems that there's going to be like, I think that's how a lot of the lines are going to be split are what platforms people are available to you access right whether it be netflix sling who i mean you know what i mean much like we're talking about the 90s shows being revived the list of streaming sites has grown exponentially for in the last 10 years from what right. used to be basically just netflix and hulu and youtube Netflix stock just dropped today too by i think like oh everybody's stock's been chunk. dropping yeah, especially since they announced that uh that price uh, up <laughs> that they're going to be doing here soon they said yeah they're a, a change on their prices i don't know how much the price is going to be maybe another dollar for each i don't know i'd have to look into more but yeah they're upping the prices again <laughs> yeah we're going to see how long they can continue to do that because once again well i yeah. guess as long as people are willing to pay so many shows that it sucks like like there's some i actually really did get invested in and then just to find out like okay it got canceled and it's like wow that hmm. i'm not gonna lie the only reason i have it now is for my like reaction channel because otherwise there's like zero shows that i would volunteer that i like literally zero that i've been cared about enough in the last year that i would have watched mm -hmm. outside of that there are yeah. ones i've watched but none I right. would have like watched on my own in my own time. I still keep my Netflix just because there is there is still kind of a there's I once every once I, in a while. I, I but do, I just I just watch a lot of ton of weird like uh, my my taste can go from like here to the right to the left and you know, like yeah and see for me like that for me I just go to YouTube where it's free <laughs> like and I can have a much larger variety because like Netflix. Uh, for one good example is always my problems. Like if, if you spend enough time, their amount of content that comes in is decent, but the amount of good content that comes in is meh. And I only know because I literally go down and I'm watching my pups flip through the channels and he's like, watch that, watch that, watch that. That's garbage. That's garbage. Where he could literally tell you this. Yep, I watched that one. Uh, this, this, and this happens. And he's like, and I'm like, how is it? He's like, see movie. And I'm like, okay. That's, and it's like, so they add a couple of good things every month. Yeah. Probably like uh, three or four. Like these two, I want to, I want to get. Uh, well, I just watched, started watching the first one. It's uh, just check it out. It's called House. House. Um, and it's actually pretty good so far from what I've seen. It's all done stop anim uh, animation, but it's not done in like a claymation kind of form. It looks like they're done in almost like a like sewn up kind of puppets almost yeah they, hmm. anyway it looks really good it's done very well to stop animation and it's kind of got this creepy kind of thing going on i think it's got like it's almost like a three anthology series all mixed into one to this dark eerie tale that kind of connects all in one hmm. um and yeah so so far it's it's uh going good so far <laughs> but once again they'd be kind of stuff um, yeah and the other one that maybe check out is another horror series it's called um archive 51 i think is what it was called Ar archive something with the number but it's a series as well and it's like a oh yeah i've seen that one the archive footage. 81 the found footage but it's one of like a kind of playing off the vhs movies where they find these like weird vhs tapes and they put them in and there's like some weird creepy shit going on in the videos and uh, almost in that kind of same form but he's uh kind of an investigative i think the uh like a detective of some sort but he's uh, investigating like a demon cult of some sort from these videotapes that he's watching over and listening in on stuff and uh but yeah i heard that one was pretty good so far too i, I, I anything kind of horror wise i'll just be like yeah let's check it out i want to check some new horror stuff out but uh, um same thing for comics I, and i i uh i'll even read some really shitty horror stuff and i'll be like but uh it's, that's just how i am i like and i can't stop that sometimes we're like no maybe i shouldn't read that it's like as soon as i hear horror i'm like let's pick it up and let's read it. <laughs> <laughs> no i feel that and for me i think the last big ones they released was like arcane and oh yeah arcane baki which i heard good still good things like people are loving that oh yeah it was it was pretty good i mean obviously i played league which it was funny because like i did my review and i really didn't like the first episode very much but mm -hmm. uh, i think it was once again the over it was just the overhype thing again where everyone was like you gotta watch this it's got such great music and the animation's so amazing and the story's so good and i'm like 
okay and then i got in and it was okay and it was good it was fine it's got really good animation it's got decent music i just it was one of those things where everyone's like you have to watch this and i could have gone 10 years and i i'm watching another show i think is better currently which is hit monkey and so it's like yeah i finally it's, finished that one too that was yeah uh, good good i liked how it ended i hope they for sure will yeah. come back to the second season for that one i'm hoping but i also am wondering what they'll do with it because they definitely pushed his story yeah yeah okay okay they also made some I mean, there's a weird le- choices left-handed notes there just a couple not too much stuff yeah I mean, they also did some really <laughs> they do yeah <laughs> they just well they also made some really just like weird decisions right at the end there story-wise because most of it was written really well and then at the end they've just i think they decided well, that they didn't have anything left off towards the end i think they yeah they they had i don't know yeah there were just some what, what, there were a couple of things where i was like without like spoiling for people where it was like the main female whatever interest yeah, i mean that was okay i guess that was yeah it was kind of it, I, it, I it, all of their actions were but, weird it, it, yeah, it was I, it wasn't well done and then the whole last last reveal for her where it was like the the character switch up or whatever just didn't make any sense as far as like uh the bullseye thing where it's like yeah you don't just put on the mask and now you're uh good at throwing shit it's like it didn't make any sense to me. I'm like, oh well, I guess now she's lady bulls, whatever. It was just weird that like little things like that at the end where where you could tell they hadn't quite figured out how to lead off into the second season, which is rough because the first one I thought was really funny with all the the appearances and stuff from like side characters like uh, Yuki and Fat Cobra and stuff, uh-huh. and then just uh, the addition of like the ghost into his story you know what i mean to make one to give him talking lines because otherwise it would just be a monkey the whole time and subtitles right yeah so that was good yeah i'm uh hoping they we'll see what they do a second season and um actually i like the whole season i i'm kind of excited to see a second one just to kind of get if it's totally fine that they ended there i guess no i'm sure they'll do another one i just wonder what they're gonna do i'm sure they can do whatever they want that's the kind of great thing about hit monkey is he's such an open character he's kind of like deadpool where you just write him with anybody and just put a plot behind it you know what i'm kind Mm -hmm. of you know what i'm saying i just wonder what they're gonna choose because this time they chose to keep it very like japanese uh and like origin story right like this was his origin to become hit monkey or whatever in the Mm -hmm. whatever that tv show but i'm not knowledgeable enough about hit monkey stories to know any of his other like big interaction stuff too much that's for sure Um, yeah like that's a lot of issues for he's Um, he's usually once again an intro a side character that's pushed into other people's stuff to motivate them to mm -hmm. do stuff I think he, yeah, he does have a mini series, but it wasn't very long. I mean, it's probably like maybe eight issues for that mini series for him. Yeah, that was pretty much it. And then he showed up in dead. He showed up in the Deadpool issues after that, or first, and then that's when he came out with his own mini series. And again, after that, he doesn't have that much. Uh, he, you know, it's weird too. That even leading up to the show, you know, sometimes they'll have some books. Yeah, they didn't like, have anything come out for him, which is weird. For him. I think they had a digital one. That's what it was. They even did that for Modok. Which was I thought was interesting because the Modok comic was actually better than than the Modok show that they did. No offense to the show, it was just a really well done comic for Modok uh, that I they still did. Need to finish the uh, Modok show. I've uh, started it, but I just have so much stuff to watch. Or- yeah, there's so much stuff. I totally feel that. I finished it a while back for the the thing. It was pretty good. I don't. It's not really a story one. I, I guess it kind of is, but. I will say it was definitely more impressive than I gave it credit for, especially considering uh, the main voice actor was Patton Oswalt, and I hate Patton Oswalt as a voice actor. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I, I guess I've grown to like him just because I like him in Bob's Burgers, and that's it. <laughs> My problem with him is his, it's just Patton Oswalt's voice. That's the same yeah. voice acting voice he uses every time. There's no changes. He doesn't even try. It irritates the shit out of me. Just like, nope, I'm just gonna voice Pat <laughs> um, Oh my god. Well, so I know you're gonna make this a little bit short here today. So yeah, I, yeah. I, I wanted to just go over my list here of some things that were, we did best while we were away. So there was the Cuphead uh, trailer that came out. 
Yeah, that just came out this out week. February 18th on Netflix. Um, which so I'm is, excited to watch that. Which is I funny. Was, they, I was a huge fan of the game. Yeah, it was very interesting is that it doesn't, the 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 uh, the show doesn't seem to have the same tone as the game had at all. From what I've seen, because from what I had seen, the, the, the Cuphead game is very cartoonish, but it's almost kind of dark in a lot of places or more... Um, Mm-hmm. more mature i think they kind of maybe tried to aim it towards kids a little yeah bit. no it, it looks it's like a kid's on. show yeah for sure so i, I looked at it and i but... think they kind of i mean because the kids do kind of gravitate towards a little bit because my son really likes cuphead um so i don't know maybe that's what it was because they know this may be a lot of kids like it, it is the more profitable way to go <laughs> make so. show a little bit more kid friendly just a little bit not i mean you have a devil running around with horns and stuff so it's not still a little <laughs> i mean it's a, a little bit i guess but it's just once again when you look at the tone of it as compared to like the regular uh the cuphead game even even just the tone of the animation is yeah. very enlightened and like less yeah. detailed what lines of, uh, oh, you. They're like an old time kind of Style uh, a, actually they have they actually are doing a little bit of, of both of them in with the animation they saw it's just they've definitely toned it down like mm-hmm. from their regular style so like i think the difference isn't even the like filter but the um the lining and some of the shading so like in the cuphead game a lot of it is old lining and shading so it's very detailed in certain parts that give like uh what's it they they give uh like weight to the character mm-hmm. but the new ones are still having some of the old school animation with like less depth and so it just seems more lighthearted or like less intense. I wonder if it was because I mean I could have been that too because I know when they were building the game they had a really hard time of like designing it to make it look like that old time feel like it really felt like a uh, like a thing that came out from the 1940s or 50s. Well, yeah, that's because that those art pieces know. are yeah yeah maybe they just didn't have the same tools on the on the animation studio side to do the same kind of like almost you know like i said almost the same feel of that but again or it could just be yeah they were just making it more towards the kids definitely uh could be either way i'm not sure you can definitely see like i'm just looking at them kind of side by side and you can see the change in style of animation i I definitely would say that the um the new one is kind of not quite 2000s, but like a 2000s mm-hmm. attempt to mimic an old school style, if that makes sense. Yeah. So, yeah. It, I mean, it'll be interesting to see. I just I, that's the what I got from the uh, what I saw the trailer. I also thought it was interesting how late they dropped the trailer in comparison to their release date. I think they just yeah, I think they just because uh, they just came out with the DLC that came out last month. Was yeah, it last month? Some like so that. that yeah, so that's probably why, because there was some hype around that coming. Around. I was actually going to go pick it up again just to play it, uh, the DLC part, some try some new bosses, but nice, <laughs> nice. Stuff that, again, I haven't picked up again for a while and tried, but and always forget to try it again. But <laughs> uh, oh, uh, some other things here that just launched today was pretty cool. I know they were working on this, and uh, Guillermo del Toro is doing his own take on Pinocchio. Um, that's going to be interesting. Still another, we still got another Pinocchio movie to come out from Disney because they're going to be doing the live action one. Yeah. With Tom Hanks. And, and see, uh, Keno. see, uh, see, remember we were just talking about exclusivity? <laughs> and right. and uh, that, do you remember? At one point, Pinocchio was exclusive. <laughs> but then right. it, well, actually, did you know where Pinocchio uh, started it's, from? It's a book. Yeah, it, I didn't. Uh, well, I knew that after reading a lot of disney stuff uh a lot of stuff was you know not really originally disney it was just more of stuff that they took and kind of made it more. no yeah it's a book that they happy and well, even yeah. from them i think were even some grim tell stories as well i think snow white was a grim tell yes story. snow white is um, uh grim tell 162 uh fuck what is the actual because her name's not actually snow white either yeah no most likely yeah that's well it's <laughs> like they would rather use for sure it, it, well it is no it's whatever it's like it's the equivalent in german right where it's like white as no right, whatever it's some right. weird shit then, uh, but pinocchio is an which is they they do take that the disney movie and they do try to teach like kids not to be like hey you got to be good because this is what happens to you but in the actually... pinocchio books they're a little bit more very more dark oh yeah all of the all all the fairy tales are more adult 
um, back then, which is so funny. He died a few times, Pinocchio. And no, that's that's how he becomes the, the doll. He was originally was yeah. a real kid, I believe, in the story. Uh, but yeah, yeah there was a bunch of stuff once. Few times been there, but yeah. Anyways, I I just uh, it's just crazy. This you know how Disney came from, uh, not came from, but like you know took some very dark stories. And oh, I mean all of them. them up and, and they ended up being one of their, you know, Snow White being one of the most popular, the, most, uh, the craziest things Cin- I've ever seen. Cinderella is the same way. So a lot yeah, of them are Grim Tales. Yeah. The others are. Um, um, fuck what are those other rot nursery rhymes that are from england i can never remember mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but uh yeah they they do a lot of it is repurposed and the reason is those are all in the uh public domain so anybody can yeah, use those to write stories <laughs> for what <laughs> yeah, Pinocchio is not like yeah disney only oh, person i mean yeah. they have the right how to that they have the rights to their version of pinocchio yeah, but that's about but that's it, it. Um, yeah. and even okay. then it's tentative so even McGregor will actually be the one playing um, the uh, cricket. So it was actually pretty cool. To li- he was actually doing the introduction for the trailer, and uh, that'll be cool. The, uh, it's all kind of going to be like this, um, almost not stop animation, but it's it's done in animation, but it looks kind of like stop. And if you kind of get it, be like almost yeah, like yeah. stop animated, but um, yeah, it looks pretty cool. Um, looks interesting. I, I always watch anything Guillermo del Toro does. Anyways, I still need to go watch his Antler movie that came out uh, like last month or so. Yeah, I had heard a bunch of hype about it and then nothing at all. So I just assume it was a I, movie. Yeah, some of my horror friends that like uh, really loved it told me to go check it out. Um, but yeah, it's just something I just on my list. I gotta go watch here. Um, let's see what else we hear. We have oh, uh, finally we didn't really get a trailer, but it's just like a little teaser trailer for the new Lord of the Rings. That yeah. Was- uh, it was it wasn't even a teaser trailer it was a fucking intro because there was literally no people in it yeah there was there was it was all background animation of fucking um uh molten metal it was the stupidest intro trailer i've ever fucking heard they could have just literally clipped the original i don't know that one actually pissed me off i'm glad to hear news that it's coming but that was like the shittiest fucking teaser i've ever seen in my life (laughs) ever they literally could have clipped the original because they they also took the exact words from the original lord of the rings movie and didn't change any of it for that intro so I was like, you could have clipped the original Lord of the Rings intro, cut scenes in, saved yourself probably twenty thousand dollars in VFX work, and and it, and people would have been nostalgic for it. <laughs> it was just so silly to me. I was like, yeah, Lord of the Rings, and then I went to go watch the trailer. I was like, this is fucking garbage. <laughs> oh my god. Let's see. And I didn't, there wasn't really too much after that. There was just the Bob's Burger trailer as well. I did hear about that coming out. Uh, yeah. Got a last week, and that will finally be uh, coming out May 27th. So that will be uh, interesting to go check out. And where they said Beavis and Butthead, which we've seen those new designs here. Uh, oh, the Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur show will be coming out summer uh, 2022. So that one should be pretty good. There's a little teaser trailer they gave us as well. <laughs> I believe, uh, yeah, Lawrence Fishburne. Was, yeah, that was uh, I, that was interesting because I didn't know who he was going to be. Is he going to be the dinosaur or a villain? Or Because they didn't show uh, who he know. was. We'll have to see what's going to happen with that. Um, so it's interesting to see him there. The, uh, Goonies TV show as well coming to Disney+. Plus. Yeah. Uh, so we'll see if that one happens. Um, I know we did get Sonic the Hedgehog trailer as well. Um, which was yeah, uh, looking pretty good as well. I can't wait to get some tails action in there. Um, oh, I thought we already I, did I think get one tails. Thing I was excited for was uh, finally, finally. I know, I know. This has always you know been in the works for the longest time. I think even Neil Blunkamp, who's the guy who did District Nine, uh, Elysium, and all those kind of futuristic kind of movie. Oh, uh, Chappie as well. Um, he was on the project to do a Halo movie way, way back then. And that kind of fell through. I don't know if you remember when they were doing kind of like those promotional trailers for Halo 3. And they were like these live action trailers of like the soldiers like blasting at elites and everything and all that. That was actually Neil Blunkamp uh, doing all those scenes and everything, which are kind of like a test drive to do the, the Halo uh, movie. But it, again, it just never happened. And um, 
so they kind of, yeah, project fail. Uh, finally, it looks like we're going to be getting the uh, Halo TV show, though, on Paramount+. Plus. Yeah, yeah, they, uh, they released so the trailer. For but... that. Uh, I've always been a huge Halo fan. Um, I know I've kind of fallen off of it the last maybe few years since, you know, uh, the last game. I mean, it's been a while since we uh, got this new one since 5 till now. And 5 kind of wasn't even that great either. I know a lot of people are disappointed in that one. I was too as well just because of having to split off from like this new brand new character that we didn't really know about until, like uh till this new game and then play master chief always so often so i think that's kind of what you know split everyone off there too but multiplayer was fun but still was just <laughs> one of those ones that wasn't all that great in the story but i mean um yeah other than that i mean we'll get the halo tv show i guess it's supposed to be coming out 2022 so no actual month or day or anything, just just this year. <laughs> see, and the when they have release dates like that, I'm always just like, sure, all right, I guess we'll see it in 2023, because <laughs> that's right. almost always how it works when they do it like that. Um, but we'll see how they go. Hopefully, they get it out in time. Um, I, um, yeah, yeah. Um, oh, and then I guess last thing is finally, it looks like the Predator uh, lawsuit is finally over. Uh, Disney, I think it looks like they settled the claim with the uh, screenwriter uh, for Predator. And so, um, yeah, so it looks like they can go ahead and start making um, those Predator comics that were supposed to come out last year <laughs> <laughs> and also can continue to work on this Predator movie that is uh, supposed to be coming out this year already. They've already started filming <laughs> like last month. So uh, um, I don't know. I guess maybe we'll see it this year. I'm, I, I have very little. Uh... Only to see where it's going to go. Because uh, we always get the same kind of, you know, it's on the earth. We, you know, they have to fight this thing. Yeah. Uh, they and did the other. The last one was okay. I was going to say they did the other one that where it was the exact opposite, was where they took him. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say the one they did that, that everybody hated. So I don't think they're going to do that again. I only li- and I only liked it because the designs are really cool but then the thing is with that one when they did the one on the predator it was literally just to the t the first one <laughs> but it was just on a different planet because they had the the same kind of like showdown with uh billy when Pre- the predator is going to face down billy he's about to take him down by himself and then he dies but in the new one it was that japanese uh samurai dude and he was gonna do the sh- final showdown and then we have uh, andy playing basically our version of arnold schwarzenegger and then they basically did the same thing at the very end where he like kind of i don't know they, they just did too many of like the for nostalgia purposes i'm pretty guessing on that but it just is too much to the t like the first one but then they were just on the predator plant <laughs> yeah I, I guess i can feel that but yeah i, don't, I yeah, doubt they're the gonna designs, do it the designs are super cool I yeah like the i'm just saying they're probably not gonna go off planet again because that one didn't do no, well so no the new one if, uh, uh there was already uh, came out the new script so it's actually based in uh gonna be uh within the native american times so, right, so it'll still be here. <laughs> Check it out. I, it sounds we pretty already decent. Done. Yeah. Yeah, we've done the planet one already, and can't do that one again because we've. Yeah. But we just, like I said, they won't do it again if it if it don't do well. They won't do it again. They've that's it sucks, but that's how Hollywood functions. The same reason, like we won't get another Hulk movie. Really, we're just every time they try it, doesn't work well. Which like one? Uh, Hulk. That we're not gonna get another good. Oh, we'll get him. That one too, but just because you know, yeah, Disney. Once the, the universe, even beyond that, like when they. The only close I'll get to him now is just the uh, She-Hulk stuff. That's about the closest yep. we'll get to our Mark Ruffalo. Who's yeah, there. and she's so uh, different from regular Hulk. It's almost a. Uh... I don't know. Yeah. It, it'll be interesting. Flow in there too. Uh, I mean, doing the yeah. Many episodes. I'm not gonna lie. I don't care if he's in there at all because I don't care about him as a Hulk. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> yeah, he's never been my favorite either. Uh, I just don't care either way. It's like I actually don't like any of the live action Hulks at all, including Lou Ferrigno. I think they were all pretty meh. Um, yeah. No, I just have. I've never felt any of the actors were expressing the like deep-seated unending rage that is supposed to be encompassed in bruce banner and hulk's character uh-huh. like any of them even like lou Verigno played a good hulk uh at you know being hulked out but that was like sure being that time when they you know well even <laughs> even enjoy. right and and he did good for i mean for that time they did really good but beyond that he's only playing the hulk he's not playing bruce banner Sim- oh, no, no, no. similar to the way uh we talk about like different 
actors of Spider-Man being different, better at different parts, right? Like so certain. Uh, I think it's similar for me for the Hulk, and I don't think I've ever like found someone who I cared enough about the person who acts as Bruce Banner, not as the Hulk, because you know the the Hulk I does think, fine. I think people kind of ignore that portion because oh yeah. I think they just don't. You know, the, 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 I think that's where that's what happens. Really, is just that they're not really focusing on Bruce Banner too much. It's just because nope. when people go see Hulk, they're like, I don't "Give a shit about Bruce." No, nobody cares <laughs> about Bruce Banner. Hulk, and I'm like, I want to see damn Hulk, and then it's like, and then, but I see what you mean. You're like, no, no, no. With well, I just want some accuracy that, or some yeah. some characterization outside of. All right, so let's, let's uh, like you said, nobody cares about Bill, Bruce Banner, so take him out of the fucking movie and just put Hulk in every scene. Yeah. Otherwise, there's no point in having the character uh, conundrum of being Bruce and being Bruce Banner, which they did basically kind of do for most for a good portion of Thor Ragnarok, yeah. where it was just like that was probably the best. Well, at least to me, it was a pretty good version of Hulk. Of Hulk, right? right? Once, but once again, the Hulk is never really a problem. The Hulk uh, is always is almost always fine. Mm-hmm. It's Bruce Banner who we we usually have issues with. Because like even in the original Hulk movie, the the one way back in fucking what is it two thousand or whatever, the yeah, Hulk that that's actually my favorite Hulk. No, he's good. I, I, yeah, I, I like this. They did really go into that, you know, story of like. Uh, once you know, again, not, not. Sorry, I should. Up. Oh, you mean like the f- like the Hulk. version of the Hulk is my va- yeah. favorite Hulk because he's the Ruka Hulk, <laughs> and his and his feats, his feats were all on par with what Hulk should do. I mean, he was jumping across country. Oh yeah, doing literally yeah, jumping well. across country, everything, everything that are we and we basically, honestly, we we've talked about how the versions of comic book characters are different from movie to um to comic book because of like writing stuff, right? Like you can't really write the Hulk as strong as the Hulk needs to be comic to movie. Without mm-hmm. without having some really weird, yeah, overpowered, and same for Thor, right? And it's the opposite. I'm you know. mad about Thor being, you know, not as strong as he could have been too. But then again, it's that same thing. Like, well, you know, uh, same for Thanos. Or... Same for, you know, yeah, same for Doctor Strange. Movie, right. If they right. Just hit him it, in one hand. It's, it's the <laughs> it's the Superman problem. If Superman was written intelligently, same kind of for the Flash, he'd have no enemies. It would, all the fights would be done in two panels, right? Like, because he's so fast, so smart, so strong, and so nearly invulnerable. There's basically nothing that could give him any real trouble if he stopped and thought for two microseconds but (laughs) that doesn't make an interesting story right doesn't make it fun if he could just beat all his enemies with no help and no problems and there's no uh pressure so yeah and and absolutely like uh once again not to like criticize even uh any of the other hulks but it's just different ones where I, i wish they would um you know uh, they actually did a really good job in the new Spider-Man with that, which I'll give him credit for, which was capturing the essence of of Peter's dilemma. Yeah, his child, Peter- like, then all his, like, actual teen drama that we all kind of have in our lives. Oh, yeah, lives, well, even... Know, we all connect him on that level of... Even, even beyond that, what I mean is they get the... P- the message that sits behind Spider-Man, which is uh, with with great power comes great responsibility. Oh, yeah. But what that message really means, everyone hears that and they think, right? Oh, great power. But what that really means is what you see in the re- the, the that movie, which is um, doing the right thing doesn't mean getting what you want. Right? It sometimes means sacrificing or doing things that are not good. And that's Spider-Man's eternal struggle has always been being Spider-Man means he can't do the things he wants to do in his life. He can't have Mary Jane. He can't have a good job. He can't have a college degree because he's Spider-Man. And similarly, I want to see the same thing from the Hulk, his message of his story being, the kind of like outcast forever burdened by his own uh monster right like Mm -hmm. the hulk and bruce himself really being the the impetus for it is always his own biggest enemy 
Mm -hmm. he, he, you know what I mean? And so I want to see more from him in those. Right. Have you but, been reading the new issues of Hulk yet? There's yeah, they've been. Awesome, yeah, I was going to say they haven't gone very far. They've been pretty cool. I've been catching those and then a bunch of the X-Men stuff. Uh, different take on this Hulk where it's kind of like a like a battleship Hulk. <laughs> That's interesting. I like it because he, he's setting up, I think he's setting up for Claw. Probably, especially knowing Donny Cates, I'm almost sure he'll go for the most um, metalish slash outrageous version of the Hulk, which is Claw. Mm -hmm. But uh, also just the way uh, the the stories have moved before, and like how we came just from obviously the one below and all. I think it's it's a better take to like chill it out a bit. There's not really much higher we can push him. You know what I mean? After that. Where it's going right. to be like, what are we going to do after the one below all? The one below the one below all? The one above the one below? <laughs> so I think it's cool to take it into these areas where it's like, let's just have fun with the Hulk and like build a different mythos that's not really even that related to the one before too much. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. It's still kind of... Yeah, it's going it's to be interesting to see who this new... Uh, persona Hulk, is, yeah. Yeah, Persona Hulk is going to be. I mean, like I said, it's kind of like his... No Hulk, <laughs> so that's what everyone's already calling him. So, well, we'll uh, I mean, we already kind of got to see him in uh, issue three, uh, just a little bit cameo. Uh, yeah, I, I saw the little but, uh, silhouette. Yeah, we'll I'm curious how they're gonna make his design on this one if they're gonna. Yeah, and who, we'll and who, I'm curious. And who knows? Maybe Marvel will get the rights back to the Hulk, and we'll eventually get a good Hulk movie. That's what I was gonna say. Maybe though, eventually, just uh, yeah, get all the full rights from Universal because I think Universal only owns like the distribution rights to it, and that's about it. But they, you still get a chunk of that change if they were to make a Hulk movie and stuff. So I, I'm curious, yeah, if they were to get that those full full rights, that how was Disney's take on the Hulk would be? You know, I mean, they've done a good job of you know taking Iron Man and. Uh, a couple of other characters. I, they've I mean, done an extraordinary job, even to the point where I still, and I still haven't watched, but from basically what I've heard, The Eternals is like a hit or miss. It. Is it good? I've heard hit or miss. I like like people, I the, like it. Yeah, and that's what I've heard is like, the people I've heard have either been like, I, it really wasn't for me, it was meh, or they enjoyed it. And so when I hear that, that means that it's pretty good movie like it's it's a it's a uh preferential right if you like it you like it if you don't like it, you don't yeah. like it kind of movie it's not like at least it's not at least thor what's it thor? uh dark world. dark world yeah dark that's world is that that's bad. i love that that's and the funny thing is i went back and watched it recently and it's it's bad right but it's really not that bad like when I you mean, it's, not, it's not bad it's just like it wasn't on there yeah one of it's the once again with for marvel it's a bad movie it's a it's <laughs> a bad which is weird to say like that but it is and yeah no for sure and, and that's the thing people were saying it's like this is one of the and it really wasn't and even if you go look at the scores you look at people's random reviews it's like people were basically half and half on this well, uh probably just because now that everything else has come out now and they've probably reiterate their whole list and be like well out of everything that one probably was not the best <laughs> right i think that's the other thing is like we were so spoiled by having these great movies like spider-man no way home and avengers endgame and and stuff like that that we get spoiled and forget like you know black widow is pretty decent movie it's not as uh, yeah it, it's 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 definitely no end game or yelena she's yeah i mean i even like her in hawkeye she's awesome yeah the there was a, right and and they're great they'll they're definitely not the blockbuster achievements that uh the movies are not the blockbuster achievements that end game etc were but they're good movies right they're fine they're, they're 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 enjoyable um pieces of media and content uh and with that we've already basically yeah, did not do a short one so be our hour <laughs> yeah there, but yeah definitely check out eternals i thought it was good it introduced some pretty cool uh, cameos at the end. Nice. Um, so I was really excited to see those. And uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm excited because it, it was different. It was cool. I mean, they're the. It's one of those things again where it was like I guess it was just too many characters, and then you have to kind of like go into all their backstories as much as you can to kind of get people to connect to these characters and sometimes it's going to be a hit or miss with some and yeah so I think that's kind of what it was just just too many characters and once again it's it's so rough for me because i like the eternals 
both comic book characters, right, and probably the movie. I, I enjoy the concepts behind them, their individual personalities, and, like, I had read mm-hmm. Eternal stuff prior to even the movies and stuff coming out because I like Thanos, you know what I mean? So I wanted to be mm-hmm. versed on his history. And it's so rough for me that they just... I don't know why they don't do well commercially. Because I think they only... I mean, they did fine. They made 400000 during COVID, which is a fine right, number. Right. I mean, that's, that's, that's as much as... Comics, too, I know, because... They they were trying to lead up to these events like I know they were trying to do, but it's it seems like they're kind of just like this is in and they're going to be done with that right, which is rough because the comics were were actually like the last Eternal run was really good. Uh, the the Eternals Rising and the Eternals are the Eternals Thanos Rising or Eternals yeah, Rising. There was that, those yeah little so good up into they were really well written. Like the way they're they they explored Eternals history to like build their mythos right in the ways that we really hadn't gotten from them before, which was something they really lacked was this kind of like concrete background for the Eternals. They were giving places and like it was very nice, uh, and just the writing was good. I heck, I can't remember who was on it. It must have been somebody I liked because I, I was enjoying it. Wing. Must have, it was it? It might that might be because it was really well written. Uh, I think he was doing it. Yeah, I wouldn't doubt it at uh, all. Yeah, I mean, other than that, I mean, we'll uh, we'll see if. Uh, yep. Yeah, yeah. yeah uh, I think it was Ali Wing. Yeah, we'll we'll see. But anyways, yeah, I think we'll end it there. <laughs> For sure. Yeah, we'll we'll keep talking. It's been a while, so I knew we were gonna end up talking a bit. But uh, yeah, as always, man. Thanks for coming through and chatting with me, and hopefully, you know, we'll be able to. Uh, have a have another one next week and hopefully have more uh, great actually there should be i think there's something dropping in between now and next week but i can't remember what uh it's gonna be jackass jackass which is so funny so much. but yeah we'll talk about that when it comes out next week uh thanks again man for coming through and for everybody who watched appreciate you guys we will see you next time here on comic combos if you enjoyed watching or want to support the channel, remember to attack that like button, subscribe on YouTube, follow on Twitch, or join our Discord using the link on screen or in the description below so that you can get daily updates on all of our uploads and live streams. We know we're not perfect and we can always improve, so please visit our Discord or comment below with a critique or a compliment to let us know how we can improve ourselves. Finally, if you're just starting for more content, you can become an honorary member of 3D Productions at patreon.com slash 3D and get a exclusive access for as low as a dollar a month.